My father one day overheard me say to another adult that I wasn't having a particularly happy childhood. <laughs> he was furious. He came over, he shouted at me, you have an idyllic childhood, a brilliant childhood. How can you say that, stupid girl? And then I just felt confused and like I got something wrong and... Um, I didn't, I didn't feel any better. We want our children to be happy so much that we try to scold them into it, but, but that doesn't work. If we don't accept all of our feelings, all of a child's feelings, as well as just their happy ones, we are teaching a child that great chunks of them are unacceptable. What my dad could have done Instead of telling me off for having inconvenient feelings, he could have tried to find out more about them. So how are you feeling? When do you feel that? How, where do you feel that? Yeah, I can understand that. What he missed out then was a moment of connection. And what we want with our children, more than anything, are moments of connection, are a good relationship where we're both on the same page and we both get each other. That is the, the main thrust of my philosophy, actually, is that we concentrate far too much on the child and correcting the child and moulding the child, and we don't concentrate half enough on our relationship, how are we interacting, how are we affecting each other. We know that children want love, but they also need boundaries. So you love someone, but then you have to tell them no. It's a very difficult thing to uh, navigate. But it's a lot easier when, instead of defining the child, you are this, you are that, you must, we instead define ourselves. You may be ready to take the night bus, but I'm not quite there yet. You're going to have to wait for me to be ready with the idea of you, age 13, on a night bus because I'm not quite there yet. But if you say you are no way capable of catching that bus on your own, how does that feel? When you get that, you just want to fight back. Define yourself and not the child when it comes to putting down boundaries. And this might be not only about catching night buses, but you know, when you're with a four-year-old in the playground and they say, um, I want to stay here forever. And you say, we're going in five minutes because you've had enough. That's not very nice for them to hear as well. What they need to hear from you is the truth. They need a relationship with you. You have to be authentic. And so although it sounds like you're being selfish, you're not hiding anything when you say, I'm bored, I'm cold, so we're going in five minutes. And also it teaches children emotional intelligence because emotional intelligence, a great part of it, is knowing what you feel and then from that, knowing what you want, and then asking for it. You might not get it, but at least you know who you are and where your needs and wants are coming from, which is your feelings. This might seem quite long-winded, because what you want to say is, do this now, because that seems like really quick and gets everything done very expediently, but it doesn't help your relationship with your child, which is what your child needs above all things. So there's no way of not investing time. <coughs> Invest it early first, positively, rather than try and get away with it and then have to invest an awful lot more time negatively later. Think of it like this. You're on a train journey with a toddler and you've got colouring books, um, a packet of Sylvanian families or Lego or something, and a little picture book and you just wish the kid would involve themselves with this stuff so you can get on with your novel. I mean, that's human. If you go, ooh, what have we got here, and play with them so that they don't have to work to get your attention, so that they know they can depend on you, then that frees them up to become involved in whatever games or toys they devise from whatever there is in front of them. 
they might find you're not very good at talking Teddy or whatever it is. So they'll grab it off you and take over and they'll talk Teddy. And then they'll get on what I used to call autopilot when my daughter reached this stage. Now, this uh, is true of uh, independence in children in general. So the more you push your child to independence, the more they'll come back and want to cling to you. The more you're available and dependable, the freer they'll feel to go off and explore. So don't push them away. Just be there, be dependable, be available, and then they'll know they can come back to you when they want to take their explorations out into the world. With your kid, you are setting up within them a blueprint for all their future relationships. Not only their future relationship with you, but their future relationships with the wider family, the community, society, and indeed, the world. And we want a world where people listen to each other, take their feelings into account, collaborate, and not a world where people are dismissed, done to, and manipulated. People do as they are done to, so let's do the best for our kids. And I'm optimistic, and it's really important to be optimistic that our kids will get where they want to be. And I'm optimistic that we can do this. Believe in your kids that they can do this. And I believe in you. Thank you.